Welcome to investigation 5.1, looking for patterns among exponents. So in this investigation, you're going to be looking at how exponents can develop some certain like some certain patterns within, um, or when they're put uh, above certain numbers and that sort of thing. So our focus question is, what pattern did you observe in the table of powers? So this should say the table of powers. So using that focus question, let's see if there's any patterns that we can see. So to start this out, let's look at this concept. We have y is equal to 2 to the n power. So if n were whatever power, what could we get? And we can also add in this idea of if I have 1 or 2 to the first power times 2 to the second power, I can rewrite that as 2 to the third power, and we want to make sure that's going to work. So let's see what these various powers equal. So if instead of n, we had 1, so we have 2 to the first power, we could rewrite that as saying 2. So 2 to the first power is 2. We're going to multiply that by 2 to the second power. We also know that 2 to the second power is essentially 2 times 2, or we could rewrite that as 4. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Let's see if 2 to the third power is equal to 8. So 2 to the third power is 2 times 2, which is 4, and then multiplying that by 2 again, and we get 8. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8, which is essentially that same idea of, I just wrote that down again, is the same idea of saying 2 to the first power times 2 to the second power can also be rewritten as equaling 2 to the third power. Is this true? 2 to the second power times 2 to the third power will equal 2 to the fifth power. Essentially, what I'm seeing right here is an addition of these exponents. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So let's see if that is also true. 2 to the 4th power is equal to 16. 2 to the 5th power is equal to 32. So we know that 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 to the 3rd power is equal to 8. And 4 times 8, what does that equal? 4 times 8 equals 32, and that is 2 to the 5th power. So does this idea always work, essentially, that adding of exponents? And through this investigation and through the upcoming investigations for Investigation 5, we will be able to answer this question. So let's finish up this table. We have 2 to the 6th power, or we could rewrite that as 64. We have 2 to the 7th power, which we could read at, rewrite as 128, 2 to the 8th power, or rewritten as 256. So based on this idea, let's see if we can continue this process. So in this investigation for 5.1, you were given a table to fill out. So I have completed that table, and now all I want to do is look at some of those patterns that we have within this table. If I were to look at some of the patterns in some rows, what I see right here for this particular row is that they're increasing by 1. So 1 to the first power is 1, 2 to the first power is 2, 3 to the first power is 3, and so on. And so it's just sort of a plus 1 pattern. What I see with this next row is I see a plus 3 here, I see a plus 5 here, I see a plus 7, so I can predict that there's going to be a plus 9, a plus 11, plus 12, plus 13, plus 14, plus, or, er, sorry, plus 11, plus 13, plus 15, plus 17, and plus 19 in between those. So that's like plus odd numbers, which is kind of cool. In the next one, Mm, I'm not necessarily seeing a pattern jump out at me row-wise, and same with this next one, except for that I see a 1 in that 1's place, I see a 6 here, a 1 here, a 6 here, a 5, a 6, a 1, a 6, a 1, and a 0. So I wonder if there's a one like a pattern there every 10 numbers or so, and that sort of thing. So let's Row-wise, I'm not seeing tons of patterns, but there's a couple. Let's look column-wise. And I'm going to look specifically at my ones place with these columns. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
So we can just look at these columns. So looking column wise, I can see 1 to any power is going to be 1. That's obvious. And I can look over here at 5 and 6. And if I look at the 1's place for 5 and 6, I'm always seeing a 5 or I'm always seeing a 6 over and over. So that's kind of a cool pattern right there. So anything times 5 or any of these numbers with a power of 5 or with a, any sort of power, if it's 5 as the base, we'll see a 5 in our 1's place. And same for that 6. If we see a 6 in our base, we'll see a 6 in the 1's place as it continues on. Let's look for other patterns. Other patterns that I see develop um, when I look at this 2, I see 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6. I bet you that 2, 4, 8, 6 continues. Let's look at the 1's column for 3. We have 3, 9, 7, 1, 3, 9, 7, 1. I bet you that continues on. Look, let's look at 4. We have 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6. I bet you that continues on. Same for 7, 8, and 9. We have some patterns there. We have 7, 9, 3, 1, 7, 9, 3, 1, 8, 4, 6, 2, 6, 8, 4, 2, 6. For 9s, we've got 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1. And for 10s, it's that same sort of thing with the 5 and the 6 and the 1s. This is always going to end in a 0 because 10 times anything is going to be a power of 10, and 10 ends with a 0. So this is kind of cool that we got some patterns going on. So my next question is, can we predict the ones digit for 1 to the first power, for 2 to the ninth power, for 3 to the ninth power, for 4 to the ninth power? So let's do just that. I only want to predict the ones digit. So let's go back up to our table and let's predict that ones digit for our 1 to the ninth. 1 to the ninth. I am going to think it's probably going to be a 1. Just throwing that out there. 2 to the 9th, we had that 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6. I'm guessing that the next digit will be a 2. And if I were to put 2 to the 9th into my calculator, I would get 512. So that ends in a 2, which is kind of cool. For three, we had three nine seven one, three nine seven one. So I'm gonna say my ones digit will be a three. For four, we had four six, four six, four six, four six. So I'm guessing my ninth, four to the ninth is gonna end with a four for my ones digit. For five and six, I'm gonna say it ends in five and ends in six. Oops, I wrote down the wrong number there. Let me fix that. Oops, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna fix that and be, make it be a six. And let's go on to 7, 8, and 9. 7, we had this pattern. We had 7, 9, 3, 1, 7, 9, 3, 1. So I'm guessing my next number is going to be a 7. 8, we got 8, 4, 2, 6. 8, 4, 2, 6. So I'm going to say my next one is going to be an 8. And for 9 to the 9th, we had the 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1. My last number is a 1, so my final number here, my 1's digit, will be a 9. And for 10 to anything, I'm going to say it ends with a 0. We could check that. We could say that 3 to the 9th is going to be something like 18,000 or 19,000 and something. And I bet you it ends with a 3 because that pattern is continuing. So we can predict those patterns. Let's go on to this final concept. We have one other table that we can look at. We've dealt with negative exponents in the past, so let's understand what a negative exponent tells us to do. A negative exponent, when we were dealing with tens, when we had that powers of 10, when we had scientific notation, if we have 10 squared, that is equal to 10 times 10. But if we had 10 to the negative 2, we were saying that's essentially taking 1 and dividing by 10 and then dividing by 10 again. So we're essentially dividing by 10 each time. So looking at that same idea, essentially the negative exponent is causing me to divide by that number. So if I were to look at that idea, if I were to look at 3 to the x power and I were to div like do 3 to the negative 1, we have 1 divided by 3. If I were to divide that by 3 again, so I essentially had 3 to the negative second power, 
I have one, one third times one third, or one divided by three times one divided by three, and I get one over nine. So I'm seeing that my x, or my number that I get here for three to the first power is essentially flip-flopped for three to the negative first power. If I have three to the second power, my number is flip-flopped and becomes for the negative second power, and I get one-ninth. So this whole idea is kind of cool. I'm seeing a neat switcheroo between my exponent, when I see a 2 versus a negative 2, and my denominator and numerator sort of idea. So that's my prediction, and that's my idea. So if I need to make a prediction based on this table about 80 to the 0 power. So if I look at my 0 power line, it looks like 80 to the 0 power has a pretty strong chance of being equal to 1. I also need to make a prediction about what 80 to the negative first power is. I know what 80 to the first power is, and I know that's equal to 80. And we know that if we have a negative power, 80 to the negative 1, we're essentially flip-flopping our numerator and our denominator. So we're saying it's 1 over 80, because 80 is essentially 80 over 1. We can flip-flop those. If we have 80 to the second power, we also need to make a prediction for 80 to the negative 2. We are essentially looking at 80 times 80. So 80 to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over 80 times 1 over 80. And I bet you we can actually find out that number. And 80 over 80, or 1 over 80 times 1 over 80 is equal to 1 over 6400. I hope this makes a little bit of sense as you go into your homework and try this investigation. Try your hand at it. Investigation 5.1 is accessible, so try it out. Enjoy. I'll talk to you later.